What's up everybody? This is Ominous for Responsible Gaming doing episode 160 of Ominous Designs. This is an improvised early streaming episode. Um, you will get everything else just in time, don't you worry. Um, as it turns out, today I do have um, a couple of designs that I thought of just about exactly today. So we're gonna mix them up and um, they don't have anything in common, just about nothing in common. So, um, yeah, no, no more introduction. There's not, nothing much more to say. It's going to be a potpourri of designs. So let me introduce design number one. Design number one today that didn't really work, did it? Oh, that was weird. Hello. Wow. Um, Magic editor got a little crazy. Um, so, um, check this out. We're gonna do something that I think. No, I'm not gonna. I, <laughs> it's always funny when I have a design in mind to know what I'm gonna be spoiling first to to tell you exactly uh, what the card is. But I'm just gonna type. Draw cards equal to the highest power among creatures you control so first why don't we check quickly that this is the wording for this um, uh, equal I think it's highest power so I'm gonna look for high, highest power it's either highest or greatest um, Oh, maybe it's greatest. Um, it it is greatest. Okay, I had this card at the pre-release, by the way. Fun, fun, fun. Um, I'll I'll tell you about the pre-release a little later. Um, all right. So, what was going to equal to the greatest power? Actually, this is exactly what I was writing. <laughs> And I think I might have been inspired too. I, I, I kind of forgot if my train of thought started at the pre-release or if it was subconscious later, but it's quite quite definitely related. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. But there's a twist. Otherwise that would be pretty boring. Um, then, discard cards equal to the greatest power among creatures your opponent's control is that amazing or is it amazing um so i think this is a blue green spell there is sort of a um, reason it could be black but that would make a lot of draw for black like the discard bit sound feels black but the draw discard definitely feels blue um, caring about your opponent's power doesn't particularly feel blue, it actually kind of feels a little more black, but at the end of the day I'm pretty sure we can get away with something along those lines, so let's see, let's try and think of the power level a little bit. Um, I'm gonna say sorcery, I don't know, yeah. Um, I wanna say sorcery. So. How does this work? Um, first, how do you get... Um, it's actually very powerful if uh, both of you are playing creatures, because like draw three, discard three, well I guess it's not so great. <laughs> draw three, discard three is three loots, um, probably not a three mana card, worth the three mana card. Um, your opponent only has this one power for some reason and you have three power, Draw three, discard one. Um, pretty amazing. Um, draw, draw three, discard one, though, is um, a divination plus. It's a divination and a loot. I mean, it's they they kind of compound in a way that it, it's not just an addition of the two. It's more like they multiply each other, I think, a little bit. Um, but, but you still need to have three power and your opponent one. Now, later in the game, 
it's it's a really high variance card, isn't it? Because later in a game, like if you have five power, you don't really care your opponent what your opponent has as long as they have like one less or two less is amazing. So if you have five power and they have four, you draw five, you discard four. It's pretty sweet. You dig you well, it just cycles actually, but it, it, it just digs five cards. Actually it's not even that great, huh? So you really I mean it's 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 fine, but draw five discard four, it's like look at the top five cards. <laughs> it's look at the top five cards, uh put one in your hand, put the rest in your yard, basically, right? Um, which is cheap, which is not a fantastic card. The thing is that this has high variance and you can make it into an excellent card if you just manage, right? If you manage to have a six drop, uh, like a yeah, like a green creatures that has six power and your opponent is stuck at like say four, it's still not fantastic, but it's pretty pretty good. Uh, if they're stuck at three, then you, you look at six cards, you pick three, it's amazing. Um, hmm. So it's hard to, to make it more expensive, because um, it's actually not that easy to make happen, now that I think of it. It digs you a lot, but the fact that you cannot guarantee um, that that you're going to get um, a positive amount of card is, uh, is kind of tricky. And again, you kind of need to have, you kind of need to have two power more than your opponent if you want to, um, to ensure you're going to net cards right because and that's a divination basically like if you have two more power than your opponent um if you have two and they have zero divination um if you um have three and they have one divination and loot if you have four and and um and they have two look at the four top four cards discard two get, keep two um which is pretty sweet um wait a second look at the top four cards discard two, pick two, discard two. It's getting, oh no, uh, I was gonna say it's getting to fact of fiction land, but not exactly. But if you have five and they have two or three, it kind of starts looking like a fact of fiction that you uh, ended up deciding what you keep, right? Because you reveal the top five cards and either you keep two or you keep three, but you freaking decide. Uh, so that's actually kind of ridiculous. That being said, five power and your opponent is stuck on three or two i mean that can happen you can build your you can build your situation around that um uh that makes it that makes it so that it's a pretty hard card to evaluate um it kind of makes it so that i think to make sure you don't get away with murder it might cost four just so that you know because <sighs> I don't know. Like if you build a situation, you can still get yourself a fact of fiction. Now the problem is, is the setup justifying the, the, the bonus? Like if you managed to get to five power while getting your opponent to stay on two or three, do you deserve to have a better fact of fiction? Um, maybe. The thing is, this combined with um, uh, plus, um, plus x plus x pump and uh, bounce like you bounce your opponent's biggest creature uh, that could be pretty mean um, and i'm debating is it fine to have a fact of fiction which by that i mean four mana so i do imagine that we actually don't want to go back to three uh, now the problem being if you're in a normal game what exactly can you do with this uh, you can have six power when when your opponent only has four that would be somewhat reasonable for a green deck facing a non-green deck. Um, and that would be reveal the top six cards. Um, um, uh, reveal the top six cards, keep two and discard the rest, which is pretty darn sweet. Hmm stuff huh I think I would cost it like that um, it might be a card that it's that is too hard to to um, well no it's hard to balance but the the solution is probably make it too expensive for limited uh, so that it doesn't get abused uh, in constructed that's what I would guess 
um, which is unfortunate. Like I would love this to be limited playable. I think this might be hard to make happen. I feel like if you make if you put that in your deck and you go like, oh yes, everything is gonna be great. I'm gonna have a big big creature. My opponent is not gonna have big creatures, or I'm gonna pump my creature and then cast this in the same turn. Or I'm gonna play this and bounce their creature in the same turn, and I'm gonna draw four cards. This might be optimistic. And again, if you only manage to get away with one power more than your opponent, this draw this nets you one card while filtering a bunch. For four, that sounds not that great. Um, one last time, the reason I'm not doing three mana is that n now you can now in good situations you really get away with murder. Like you pay three mana and for some reason you have a six power and the opponent has a three or even even just it's a cost of divination right so if you if you have three and they have one if you have four and they have two you get like uber divination uh especially four and two like reveal the top four cards keep two discard two for three that's a little nuts <sighs> and you know even as i say that reveal the top four pick two discard the two other ones it has the condition in it that you need to have full power and your opponent only has two. That's not something you can guarantee at all, is it? Why do I keep changing my mind on this? Because, <laughs> like I can say, okay, this is a divination with filtering, except it doesn't let you two cards unless you manage to force having more than two power than your opponent well I, I think the one thing that no I, the one thing that that's that really threatening to break that discard is that you can have if you can have effects that uh, make your creature bigger and it's just gonna net you cards like right off the bat and I think I think that's probably what makes it so that you really need to make this cost money uh, because look at that um, I was looking up like the, the rich car expertise well I guess obviously it doesn't make you discard the card so there's that um but it costs six and it gives you a five almost it gives you five mana back so i guess my point is not very <laughs> convincing right here uh prem speaker is gonna um makes you draw cards equal to its power which is uh, the greatest power uh, on the battlefield that you have so it uh, she does basically just that and those two six cards have upside cost six all right, so so with downside costing four uh, is a good start. I guess I it, it doesn't really tell me if I can take it down to three. I th I'm probably gonna do the same as I've been doing every time uh, recently. I'm gonna go towards the busted design uh, because. because it's better to push the envelope and I'd rather uh, be wrong and make a card that's too powerful than be wrong and make a card that's uh, boring and playable that people hate for, for a reason that's kind of lamer than people saying, oh, this is busted, add some mana add some mana in there or something. So I think it's probably more fun to, to create the, the powered card. But um, And the fact that you need to play a pump or a bounce to kind of buzz the card somewhat inherently just makes it so that it's you add mana and you add a card uh, to get your cards back so it actually is not that smart like you, you I'm sure you can create some some um, situations but if you need to play a pump spell so that he, uh, so you spend a card you spend a mana so that you can have a cheaper draw card uh, spell it actually doesn't make a world of sense but again, you can just pump your creature and go attack and then draw a million cards. So all those things, all of those things, three mana, four mana, you will tell me. Okay. Hey, I mean, how much can you discuss adding one mana, removing one mana? I, I think I, I, I uh, mentioned most of the scenarios I can come up with. At least I don't feel that like spending an, another half hour coming up with more. Um, cool. So that's cool. That's cool, and that's cool. Um, I don't think instant speed is a good thing for for that type of card. So we're gonna stay on the um, on the sorcery speed. 
As per usual, the name and the illustration will be figured out by me uh, potentially tonight, potentially tomorrow, because I'm still going to post in two days on Wednesday. Uh, that being said, we're going to move to the second design. Um, as promised, has nothing to do with the first one. Um, and um, what should I show you first? I'm going to show you the inspiration for this card. Um, so I'm going to type something here. Boom. And um, I'm going to show you. The inspiration is drum rolls. Sublime Archangel. Sublime Archangel, why might you say? You might say that. Um, so I'm going to copy the text of Sublime Archangel because I'm going to do something like this switcheroo and surprise twist. Boom! We're going to make a vehicle. Haha! -ha. You didn't see that one coming, did you? Uh, so, simply put, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Sublime Archangel. And by that, I mean I want to make a Sublime Archangel. Um, so, this is a Sublime Archangel, basically. It doesn't have Exalted. Um, I thought I had a good reason to not give it Exalted, but actually I don't think I do. So let's give it exalted. Boom. Um, remove. Okay, so this detected my this, and yep. Okay, so um, this is probably gonna be a mythic. Um, let's check quickly how vehicle. It's artifact vehicle, right? Um, sky ship. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but uh, say what now? Is that Skyship? What's the Kaladesh thing? I was pretty sure it was a Skyship. Bear with me. Sky Sovereign Console Fly Ship. You tricky you. Um, I don't think he needs to be legendary. Um, so, artifact vehicle or vehicle because English is pronounced weird. Um, so, oh yeah, how about we put some crew on there? Um, which actually is going to be a bit of a biatch. Uh, so I'm gonna rem I'm gonna have to remove this this text. All right, that mostly fits. Um, I'm a little, a little bummed that this doesn't fit right there, but what can you do? Not much. Um, I'm just gonna pretend I don't see this, even though it's bothersome. Oh, no, what's going on here? Oh, interesting. Um, neat. Uh, crew, I don't know just yet. Um, so one of basically the idea here is um, it came with the the I, I had the thought that vehicles make you um, tap your creatures to uh, man them to crew them, right? So the downside of this obviously is that you cannot use your creatures anymore; they're they're locked um, and. I was thinking, well, what would be very cool is that you would make um, a vehicle that just kind of gives you a little bit back uh, of all those creatures you're, use, you're using to, to crew it, right? So part of me wants to bump that up to a four, which might be ridiculous, because um, knowing that the, the, sky, the um, sky Sovereign um, and the there's what like a four four flying vigilance, which is actually not nearly as good now that I think of it. Uh, but um, they are both crew for three, I think. Um, let's let's look at a couple of um, vehicles. Are very hard to design, aren't they? Um, let's look at a couple of vehicles um, to give ourselves an idea. So world text crew. 
Actually, subtype vehicle would be smarter. Ugh, subtype fencer is not gonna cut it. So, uh, so, 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 so. Something that would be, I think something that would be somewhat similar in power level, and there's probably not that many of them um, to uh, an Archangel. So this has Flying Vigilance and another upside. Uh, it, it's cast for two though, so it's very aggressive on the um, on the drop. Like you can you can crew this turn three, which is pretty neat. Um, so it's powerful, I guess, and it's the full four vigilance, which is we are not looking at a card that is that much better than this. Um, it is better, uh, but it doesn't have vigilance, and exalted is gonna is gonna add. Well, actually, it's going to add 2 to 3 uh, plus 1 plus 1s to that creation when it attacks. So it's going to be a 6-5. Um, it's basically minimum going to be a 6-5 or 7-6 when he attacks, when it attacks, which is maybe a bit of a bother. That being said, a, a Sublime uh, Archangel was that too. It was a 4-drop. That it, if you had like two creatures on the board, would get plus three plus three and would attack as a seven six. Really? Wow! Now, now that I think about it, it's it's a little, ridic a little ridiculous, wasn't it? Um, I mean, I know it was ridiculous, but usually when I play Sublime, Sublime Archangel, it was in in like stalled uh, two headed giant or um, or commander decks. He wasn't like on curve. Um, so he was like, oh, look, there's a bomb, I'm gonna die, to kill it, or, you know, it wasn't as, as impressive as play that on turn 4, have two creatures on the board, attack with a 7-6 with a or something. Um, what is that thing? I never saw it before. Another target vehicle you control become an artifact, so he crews something, and you can only crew it for 4. That's weird. Um, Smuggler's Copter, Sky Sovereign. Okay, so there's not that many of there's a vehicle, huh? Okay, um, so let's go back to Sublime Archangel though. Um, do I have that? Yeah. So she was a 4 3 flying exalted. She didn't have the downside of needing to be manned and, or crewed. Um, and I actually don't know if she was played because I wasn't particularly uh, following standard at the time. She seems great, but maybe there was no archetype for her. I don't know. Uh, and maybe there wasn't, I'm just completely unaware of it. Um, so, so she could get away with uh, a lot. Um, and I I know very little about the power ba uh, power balance of um, words, uh, power balance of vehicle. Um, vehicles. Um, that being said, if I do crew three, I mean again, like I'm like I, I'm trying to compare it to something else. So I'm so I'm thinking, well, if I only make this like a four mana crew three, um, then that means it's cheaper than Sky Sovereign. Um, if you have one creature plus Exalted uh, whatever machine, uh, then it's gonna attack as a six five. Which I think is the Sky Sovereign uh, power toughness. Well, yes, it is. Um, let's go back to this actually. Um, so, so it's going to be one mana cheaper than the Sky Sovereign. Attack as a Sky Sovereign as soon as you have two creatures. Which no, as soon as you have one creature. So as soon as you can crew it, basically. So it's always going to be as big or bigger than Sky Sovereign. On the other hand, it's not going to pew pew people when it comes into play and or when it attacks. Um, but man, still, it's pretty impressive. So I'm thinking that and then I'm going back to hell. This is this is like exactly a sublime archangel, except it needs to be crude to do anything. So can be that bad. I mean, it is strictly worse than a sublime archangel. It's very close to that. It's very close to be strictly worse, except it's a dodge sorcery speed removal. Um, so screw it. Let's make another sublime archangel, and like and and that way, 
uh, we can really show off that this is exactly a sublime archangel you know um, yeah I like I said I cannot imagine that sublime archangel is uh, too good for nowadays because power power level doesn't go that way at all um, you know the power creep is only just there to make cards better uh, just about always so if you make a subamic angel that needs to be crude otherwise it is not a creature um, you should um, you should probably have a reasonable card on your hands um, I'm trying to think of what is the difference so sublime says this forces you to tap one of your creatures um, to be able to attack and then you can attack with your other one. So yeah, if you want to attack with all your creatures, for example, because for whatever reason, the exalted doesn't work for you. Actually, it's pretty easy if you have big creatures. So if you want to attack with them, uh, you are still going to need to accrue uh, your uh, sublime vehicle to be able to attack. Whereas sublime archangel could attack uh, alongside your big creatures and not get the exalted and be happy anyways. Um, so this is actually reasonably inferior um, to a Sublime Archangel. Not a ton, but it's inferior. So I I can't really see why it would be worse. Oh, I see. I know. I know why it could be worse. This is colorless. Ah, yeah. That makes that bit of a bummer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, being a colorless sublime archangel is is a bit of a concern. So now the question is: Is the downside enough? I don't think it is. Now the problem is: um, If I want to make this more balanced. If I say crew four, people are gonna tell me crew four sucks. Nobody wants crew four. That's that's what people are gonna tell me. If I make the mana cost five, I'm gonna be very sad because I broke the parallel to Sublime Archangel. Um, it might be the reasonable thing to do though. Um, it might very well be the reasonable thing to do. Um, now I'm gonna um, I think I'm gonna be greedy um, um, very consciously and I'm gonna let you into a dirty secret I think if I do this again people are gonna be so much more excited by the design and maybe one person is gonna point out Hey dude, you basically made a colorless sublime angel that's kind of busted. But I think this is going to please people better than displease them. And if I make a 5 mana um, card over here, I think most people are going to tell me, yeah, whatever, play a Sky, uh, Sky Sovereign instead. Um, so again, pushing the envelope. I, I'm going to try very hard to not get lazy and always push my design to hell. Um, because it'll get people more excited and whatever if people tell me that it's too powerful we can tune it down but on the on the flip side like every pre-release we look at cards and and we see a couple of rares and, and and mythics and we're like how in the world is that okay this is an insane you you like you know doubling the power level or something like some things looks something look busted so it's not like i'm putting this out there and making a set out of it and printing it and selling it to wizards right like we can we can we can play test and etc but it is actually important to push the envelope still it's important to try and do something exciting and like if it breaks all right tune it down if it doesn't break it is hella exciting right this is sublime my angel excitement I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to. I don't know how to yell. And I'm excited. Um, so that's cool. Yeah, I like it. Oh, look at that! There's a credit to the template guy. Uh, thanks to uh, R 
shig uh, for these this great template. Um, that was very helpful. What do you say? I think that makes an episode. Um, so yeah, um, I will uh, wrap up those cards and find some designs for them. I will post them not tomorrow, but on Wednesday most likely uh, to, to keep to our uh, common schedule. And, uh, <clears throat> and I hope you like them. Um, they'll be posted in all the regular outlets over there in, on Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, and on Reddit, Custom Magic, great Reddit, great subreddit. Um, uh, what else, what else? Uh, quickly, uh, pre-release, a lot of fun. Um, Ether Revolt. Um, played a bunch of solid cards, nothing uh, too uh, synergistic uh, as much as the uh, previous one. Played to it a giant uh, sealed. Um, just played a whole bunch of um, uh, white blue flyers. Um, not that many... Uh, control cards, uh, some removal in black, I had Golgari, actually a ton of people, every single one of our opponents were, was playing Golgari, that was that was pretty interesting, um, including us, um, and and green, uh, the the draw card that I showed you just before, um, amazing, uh, amazing card, like draw six cards, play a card for free, it just makes zero sense, it was completely busted. Uh, played against some crazy. I do. I did have a Sky Sovereign actually. We did have this. We had a Sky Sovereign and the Four Four Flyer Vigilance that cost about the same price or cheaper actually. No, quite a bit cheaper. Uh, it cast for two. So yeah, we played a bunch of bombs actually. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I hope you enjoy yours. Um, I had one more thing to tell you. Yes, um, I'm going to be away next week. Uh, therefore, I'm probably going to try and stream my episode uh, a lot in advance on Saturday afternoon, probably. Uh, if Maybe Friday night, but most likely Saturday afternoon or Saturday morning, probably even. Um, so, you know, if you want to if you want to stay um, uh, alert and, and check out. Um, I'll probably tweet it out and, and if you're uh, following uh, you'll get an alert when I get online and otherwise I'll make the article and I post uh, next Wednesday no matter what as well so it'll be good. Um, that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching, it's been fun. Um, yeah, do follow, like, subscribe and do send the feedback because that's the most important so don't forget to do that and give me opinions on your card. This is your first card. That is your second card for the week. Uh, and it actually works like this. Boom. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you um, live next Saturday and uh, on the internet next Wednesday. And all of the Wednesdays. You know what? I'll see you every week and all of the weeks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye responsibly.